Hello, my name is Jim Gurman, and welcome to today's episode of Dulimanjaro. Today we're going to be taking a look at these two impact drivers. We'll take a look at the features of them, their similarities, their differences, and then we'll pull them apart and see if there's anything different or similar on the inside as well. So over here we've got the Milwaukee 2653 impact driver, and over here we've got the Rigid X4 impact driver. So to start with, I'm going to say I happen to like this one a lot better. It's my go-to one, but you can see that I've gotten a lot of use out of both of them. So there's a couple different reasons for that. First reason here is the speed control one. On the, on the rigid one, you just pull the trigger, and however more you pull it, the faster it goes. Over here, you do have variable speed control, but there's also this selector switch down here. And on the one, it goes very slowly, two, faster, and three, the fastest. Problem is, one is so slow and puts out so little power, it's basically useless. And three can actually get to be a little bit too fast. But there are some times when two isn't fast enough, so you're constantly switching between the three of them. In addition, this button here feels kind of crappy. It's just a little membrane switch with a little rubber dome on top. Not a big fan of that. The next thing I really like about the rigid one is down here there's another switch. And that turns on the LED, which shines up at a nice angle onto what you're working on. So you can control that without having to turn the impact driver on and off. On this one, it's closer to the bit, so it's easier to get blocked by a shadow, and also, it just goes on when you pull the trigger. It does stay on a little bit afterwards, so you can kind of start it and then pull it afterwards, but it's a little more irritating to use. I really like the fact that this one's basically on when you're grabbing it. The LED doesn't take a significant power, so if it's on some of the extra time, it doesn't really matter. The last thing I like better about the rigid one is the battery indicator. It's got a nice button down here that feels good in the finger, when, to see how much power you have left. The Milwaukee one has another little dome switch. Works just as well, but it's a little more irritating to use. Doesn't feel as nice. All right, so now let's take them apart. We'll see what they're made of, see if uh, there's any differences on the inside. Alright, so I've got all the screws out of this. It took a little bit longer than I was expecting because Milwaukee decided to use the security version of the Torx, which have a little pin in the top of them, which takes a little bit that has a little hole in the top of it instead of a typical Torx bit. Not sure why they do that, it just makes life a little more irritating. If you're going to be opening up this tool, if you think you have the expertise to fix any of this stuff in here, you're going to have one of these security bits anyways. Just makes life a little more irritating. The next thing I'm going to notice is the, the screws that are in the Milwaukee are actually a smaller diameter than the screws that are in the Rigid. You know, a bigger diameter screw is going to hold it together better. And the last thing is the Rigid is actually a three-piece design. So it has a typical clamshell, but then it has this end cap here that screws into the back of the motor. Now there's no bearings or anything in here to, to help support the motor, but it is going to keep the two pieces together. You've now got screws going in two different dimensions, as opposed to the Milwaukee where everything is just squished together this way. Now I will say the Milwaukee has screws going from both sides and it also does have a screw that goes into the impact housing here which is a metal piece so that's going to add some additional rigidity as well. On the housings themselves they're both a plastic with a rubber overlay it's pretty typical however they're different types of plastic. The Milwaukee is a nylon uh, glass fiber reinforced. The rigid one I don't believe is glass fiber reinforced, and it's actually a polycarbonate ABS. So I'm not sure which one of those is actually going to last longer. Honestly, they've both held, held up perfectly well. They feel, and maybe this one's a little stiffer, but not really substantially. Um, this one does look a little shinier. I don't know. I'm not a plastics expert, so I'm not sure which one of those is really better. Honestly, feeling them both, the rigid does feel a little less rigid. Uh, it feels a little more flexible than the Milwaukee does. So the next thing when we get them apart that we're going to notice is the motors are completely different on the two of them. Now if you were paying attention you'd notice that this is the fuel brand or fuel sub brand for Milwaukee and supposedly all of their fuel tool tools have a brushless motor. So that's the difference between the two motors here. This is a brush DC motor, this is a brushless motor. So the brushless motor it's, will have a little bit more um, a little bit more power, a little bit more efficient so it's going to last a little bit longer for the battery size. Honestly, it's not really a big deal. Uh, maybe 20% longer it's going to last. 
it's not that big a deal. If you really need that much more runtime, you can just get a bigger battery. These are the smallest batteries that both companies make. Another difference between the two of them, the Rigid has a nice fuse inside here, which is just a standard 40 amp eight, uh, car fuse. So if this were to blow for some reason, that's very easy to replace. There's no fuses anywhere here that at least are user replaceable. There may be something on the PCB that um, may be somewhat serviceable, but I seriously doubt it. The other thing to notice on the Rigid is the switch, which feels better on the Rigid as well compared to the Milwaukee, has this really big copper heatsink on it. Now, this because this is a brushed motor as opposed to the brushless motor, the switches do different tasks, so I wouldn't expect to see a big heat sink on this motor, but I would expect to heat, see some sort of heat sinks on um, the MOSFETs that are up here, and there isn't anything. So, honestly, it's never been an issue. There's some airflow that must get around here um, to keep this cool. It's never been an issue that it overheats. Neither one of these have had any problems, uh, you know, for over a couple of years. Of overheating. Now the last thing I'm going to notice on the inside here are the brushes. I'm not sure you'll be able to see down in there at, uh, and see the brushes. They don't seem to be any easy way to take them out, um, but they do seem to have plenty of life left. And like I said, I've had this tool for a, couple, a number of years and used it fairly extensively. That is something that will wear out on a brushed motor though. Eventually those brushes are going to wear out and they're probably not uh, user, user serviceable. You probably won't be able to find um, replacement brushes for it. Maybe somebody makes some, but when those brushes wear out, this tool is probably done. Brushless, no brushes, nothing to wear out. One last thing before I button this up, I did notice that this uh, rigid casing here is actually cracked a little bit. I wonder if that's because this is not a glass fiber reinforced plastic. Um, possible if it had been glass fiber reinforced nylon like this tool, that wouldn't have happened. It's probably due to the fact that I've dropped this a number of times. Um, not really a fault of the tool itself, but it is something that you don't like to see. I'm not going to try and take apart the impact drives on either one of these. The Milwaukee one is actually impossible to take apart, and I've taken apart the rigid one before in one of my other videos. When I was putting them back together, I noticed on top of the rigid here, there's another crack. Once again, I bet that's because of the difference in types of plastic. The polycarbonate ABS on this rigid impact driver is probably not as strong as the nylon mixed with the glass fiber uh, reinforcement on the Milwaukee one. I also bet that's why this one has the large diameter fasteners. With a softer plastic, you're going to need a larger diameter fastener to have the same uh, clamping force on between the two parts. So at the end of the day, this one, it really doesn't feel as nice as this one in the hand. It's a little bit flexier, it rattles a little bit more. Um, this one just feels a little bit better. However, I like using this one better. Uh, if I've got both of them sitting there, both batteries charged, whatever, I usually grab this one instead. I think it's mostly because of the trigger switch, which feels nicer, and also because of the lack of the speed control that's on here. The speed control can be very irritating. It gets in the wrong one, it's either going too fast or it's too slow to do what you want. This one you just pull the trigger, and you're good to go. You can pull a little bit softer, you can go as slow as you want, that's never an issue, or full speed if you want. After using these two tools for a couple of years, I was rather surprised that I liked this one better. This one was significantly less expensive than this one, although this was a refurb. So I was kind of surprised to see that I did like the cheaper one better. I've always kind of thought that Rigid was not at the same tier as Milwaukee, um, and I think that kind of bears that out. This does seem to be a higher quality tool, but at the end of the day, I like using this one better. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to check out some of the other videos I've got, and I'd love to see you subscribe to the channel.